Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Roundup Day. Happy Roundup Day. Yes. Happy Feast of Scottish Independence Day, too. And we'll talk about that in the profiles later. Sneaky. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Yes. And welcome to Sandy. Yes. Thank you for being with us, Sandy. Yes. I'm the Appalachian filling for Mags. I have my biscuits and I have my blueberries, but I am also currently sitting on land that her ancestors probably owned at one oh, point wow. in time up in uh, Raven County, Georgia. So I kind of feel like Mags great. is here with us. I feel her Aww. ancestor spirit. That's <laughs> nice. Nice. It's okay. great having you here. Mags Hey, look, guys. Look oh, she's there in the chat. Yeah. Hey, Megs, how are you doing? Hi, Megs. Let me know if you need any cemetery photos. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Megs is traveling and not able. She doesn't have reliable internet or uh, she's got some, like, obviously, but yeah, and other things. So we have Sandy. Is, so, so, Sandy, you're like the supply teacher of the Roundup. <laughs> <laughs> You get called in when one of us is sick, and <laughs> which we, we so appreciate. We well, you guys that. are so nice to invite me. And um, now that I know I don't have to do any calculating or any math or singing, then we're oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to sing the Ave Maria at a funeral the other day, but I, and I thought, but I didn't record it. So, oh, <laughs> maybe another time. The hangouts, the hang the connectathon's coming. So, for maybe that's oh, right. Yeah, right. So the ones kicked off. Yeah. <laughs> but welcome to everyone who's watching us live and those who are watching us after the fact. Um, uh, D gets the the award for being the early bird this morning from Augusta, Georgia, home of the Masters, among other things. Yes. Now, the Masters isn't going on right now. Surely it's not that warm in Georgia that they're playing golf. They do the Masters. It does not matter. They do the Masters. And if you've never been, go. Well, you got to usually know somebody or get a lottery. But, yep, the Masters will go on. But is it Unless going on this weekend? Uh, is it? I thought it's connected on weekend, but I might have it wrong. Okay. Might be next weekend. And okay. those pimento sandwiches are everything they say they are. <laughs> nice, nice. Christine Miller's here. Judith Fry, Chris Wine. Yeah. Uh, who else we have? Mohavlin. Uh, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, a lot of bit back and forth. And Fiordalisi, how are you doing there, Anne? Anne. Hillary Gadsby from Wales. John Tyner from Ireland. How you doing, John? Meg from sunny and warm Appalachia. I'm glad it's sunny and warm for you there. It's actually sunny here. Yesterday was a nasty day, but um, today was fine. Um, Vicky Blanco from Chile. Hey, Vicky. Uh, there's Patricia Rye, distant cousin. Yoke, how are you doing? Uh, Susie Carta, uh, Dame Mellon the first. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Jory Jordan. Uh, Chris Fer uh, Feriolo, how you doing, Chris? Donna Gerber, hey there, Lesh, how you doing? Gail hey. Martin, same biscuits. <laughs> Ruth Jolly. Oh, we do have them. My personal chef came with me to uh, the cabin, so we do <laughs> have that. Them. You will see oh, me eat it. Lisa Gervais is having a blueberry muffin when thinking of Mags. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> Mary, how are you doing? Mike P. And Terry Burks, Bonnie Dragon Cat. Uh, Oh, let's see, Patricia Virtue and well, I think Kathy Bauer. Okay, I think I've caught up to all them. Did I miss any names? I think I saw you, heard you mention all the ones that I scanned through. Okay, <laughs> JRE is here. Ooh. Mike P is the personal chef. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, that's great. Okay, well, great to see you all. Uh, we have a fun hour or so. I shouldn't. I shouldn't guess how long it's going to take. <laughs> that would be a fun thing to do. Is yeah. at the beginning of everyone write down how many minutes we think it's going to go before we end, <laughs> and see who's the closest. But I'm going to turn it over to you, our guest Sandy, to talk about uh -huh. the question of the week. So the question of the week is: What is your genealogy bucket? You know what? What is the one thing that you want to get resolved what's your bucket list what's in it i say one thing because i know that we probably have a full bucket but i'm going to go over just about one thing that everybody is really really got on their question of the week bucket list let me bring up my page here bear with me just a little bit i'm on a different system so i thought it was really interesting when we talk about bucket lists to know Greg and Betsy, what 
is in your bucket list? Oh, well, for me, it would be my my birth father was a Douglas, and I've got it, him the line tracked back to about to eighteen hundred, where my great 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 grandfather was married. But I don't know. I and that's in Ireland, County Wexford, Ireland. But I'm I'm guessing that with the last name Douglas, he pro there's probably a Scottish connection there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'd love to go further back than 1800 and make that Scottish connection. But I haven't, or any connection to, you know, what happened before that. And I do know the town, the town land where he was, uh, the town land in County Wexford. So that's a good start, but I can't get any further back now. It sounds like a road trip might be needed. I yeah. think that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Betsy? Well, I have two. Um, one is um, has to do with my Scottish ancestry too. Um, my second great grandfather had the surname Menzi, and um, so uh, I know I'm a I'm a part of the Menzi clan. Um, other researchers have said that he came. He was he was the immigrating ancestor. Said that he came from Perth. For sure, um, but I don't have proof, and I really I'd like to uh, to be able to feel more confident in that. And and then my second one is what got me into genealogy, got me interested in genealogy as an eight year old. Although I didn't even know that's what it was called, which was um, my middle name being Tudor and the family legend that we were related to the Tudors, which I really don't think is true. But uh, <laughs> there have been some tantalizing, you know, the, the fam it's interesting to me that I've seen the family belief persist widely like side branches mm -hmm. and, and for a long time going back. And there have been a few tantalizing clues. So we'll see. That would I be that's, that's fascinating. Call. And you actually make a really good segue because on the question of the week on G2G, a lot of people were saying something similar. Well, family stories said or fo family folklore, or we were told by the great aunt or by my grandmother's sister, you know, it, this might have happened, but we have no proof. And it's really tough because, you know, now that, we're all doing genealogy. We want proof. We want sources. So it's mm -hmm. fascinating. Now, I, I don't know if answers are usually selected as best answer for <laughs> this particular instance. It makes sense. And I'm going to mm -hmm. read this. It, it, it just going to read part of it because it's fantastic. And this is from Judith Fry. And I might add that she is a Kentucky Appalachian and said, mm -hmm. I would love to go to the Family Search Library in Salt Lake City. Oh, to be able to hold, read, see all those books about my family. I grew up in El Paso, Texas, and they had quite a large genealogical collection. I was able to find several books about my mom's family in Virginia. It was quite a thrill to actually hold a book and find information you didn't have. I was able to break down a couple brick walls with a will book from Virginia. But imagine what I could do with all those books in Salt Lake City. And I think that's, uh, you guys were recently at Roots. Did you have a chance to visit the library? I did not. Oh. You didn't? Oh, now I, I didn't get to Roots Tech this year, but I did for the first time ever oh, last right. year. And yeah. I did plan, I, 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 I told the people I, I told the people the WikiTree booth I have to take a few a few hours off to zip up to the library because I I just have to experience. Yeah. And I actually found um, I actually found a record that I didn't have before. I found a baptism uh, of a of one of my great grandmothers, who actually I was looking for I was looking for one line and it was well it was related but it was uh, another line so it was a total surprise that I was able to get this and it was oh man. It was a, it was and I will tell you that when you go, if you make a trip or plan to go to the Family Search Library in Salt Lake City, you you're probably have a research book. You don't have a page. It's not a couple notes. You have detailed information on the ancestors that you want to search and probably not enough time. And I like, I think Joku said that she doesn't have a bucket. She has a bathtub. I know that was great. <laughs> <Early>. <laughs> and I want to point out too, on the question of the week, G to G, tons and tons of people saying DNA, DNA, DNA. Mm -hmm. You guys might want to look into the WikiTree DNA project and mm -hmm. see if they can help. And also, uh, fact check me on this, but I know the WikiTree Adoption Angels project will also help you trace back to a grandparent for free. Mm -hmm. 
So if some of you are looking for a little bit closer on your bucket list, then, you know, say really far back 1700s, you might want to check out the Adoption Angels on Wikitree and they might be able to help you. And in worst case, they tell you that they're not. Something else that's very popular for us in North America, the Native Americans. We always kind of looking to see if we can trace back to the Native Americans. And that's what T was mentioning. I like this one goal from Ray. He gave us three. And I'd like to encourage other relatives, I'll add relatives, friends, cousins, whoever might be to Wikitree mm. to help us and continue. And I know that there's several profiles that I share PM management with a cousin. So that helps helpful as well. And there's this one was kind of interesting. So Oliver is looking and researching the church books that came out and they were digitized in 2023. And um, Dieter, the PL from Germany mentioned that. And I'm just going to come over to this page. Look at more than 1,000 church books from three parishes to dig through. This is kind of like going through your own miniature right. family search library and yeah. more than 1200 parish books. And this is all he said to try and break down the family walls, the family brick walls for these people. This That's a pretty heavy duty bucket list item. Hmm. And then um, if this is Betsy, this is kind of related to something that we just talked about is Monty McCoy said he'd like to figure out his paternal line. And Monty was just rocked. Mm -hmm. And one of the goals was to see if um, he was related to the uh, father of Randolph McCoy. And mm -hmm. we never were able to do that because mm -hmm. we're waiting on DNA. So again, a lot of people are saying DNA, DNA. And then the bucket list that I was thinking more of for me personally, and let me just scroll down there. I want to visit my family homeland in Scotland, appropriate mm. for today. So I think, Ray, yeah. you got other people who want to do a, a road test. Yes, that's so, right. I will tell you that my bucket list is, is used to be quite large. You chip away at it every year. I think we might have New Year's resolutions, but we chip away at our genealogy bucket list as we go through wiki tree thons and wiki tree work that we do and try and connect more and more of our family. Mine is connected oddly enough to a question that I was here two weeks ago, the ethnicity. I'm trying to use DNA mm -hmm. and try and narrow down ethnicity, which is almost impossible by the way, but I'm <laughs> determined to kind of narrow down where my Linger family came from because I've been told that they were German and they were not, they were chainsawed and um, somebody placed them in France. And just at 4 a.m. this morning, uh, one of the researchers that helps me on Wikitree placed them in Italy. So you know I'm gonna be bugging Chris Ferriolo for that. <laughs> 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 but that's the bucket list. And feel free, if you guys still have time, put up your bucket list, let us know. I'd like to encourage those that work with DNA to come up to this G to G posts and see if you can help some people out because I would say about 90% are DNA help wanted mm. on the G to G question of the week. So if you're into mysteries, solving mysteries for others, take a look. A lot of them are global. They're, they're not just specific to one particular area and see if you can kind of help out a wiki tree or if not, then this is going to be a throwback to you, Greg, hold on to that thought because mm -hmm. he never comes around for secret Santa. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And that is the question of the week. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. There was yeah. lots of, lots of good uh, stuff going on a, a lot in the chat about find, uh, their bucket list, what they'd like. Travel was another one. Someone else has a Douglas brick wall, which is nice. Um, Evelyn is there. She said some, um, I can't remember that one her comment was um and there's another biological dna related question hmm. uh yoke was giving chris was said is it wrong that i didn't want to i don't want to uh visit the coliseum and said he just wants to go to one of his hometowns and she said you visit what you want <laughs> you 
And I would definitely, I think I would definitely want to see the hometown or the place where my ancestors were born versus the tourist. Me yeah, too. Exactly. Agree. Yeah. It's much more personal. Yeah. 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 So me. And what do you think about this? Betsy, this is Mags' bucket list. I think we're going to give you a check check mark next to that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Underway. That is great. Yes. Mags is one of the ones being rocked. Mm, actually. So that's cool. Um, so the profiles of the week, the theme for this week is which figure from the Declaration of Arbroath are you most closely connected to? Because today, April the 6th, is the anniversary of the Declaration of Independence of Scotland um, that was made in 1320. So that goes way, way back. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, are you closer to King Robert the Bruce of Scotland or are you closer to King Edward Longshanks of England? So which of those two kings are you the closest to? So um, I've decided that well, we're, I'm going to take you on a bit of a rabbit rabbit hole tour uh, before we even get to the profiles. So we're not going to do the what I've been doing the last couple of months and doing sort of compact and and pairing things up and doing a bunch of different little things. We're only going to worry about in terms of the combat, whether you're closer to Robert the Bruce or Ed, uh, Edward Longshank. So just put in the chat um, whether you're closer Robert the Bruce or King Edward of England. You know, or you could even just put Scotland, King Scotland, King of England, whatever. And if you if this is your one of your first times here, you're not sure how to do that. You can just you just go to your own profile page, and if you scroll right down to the bottom, you will have a section that looks like this. Now I've got the WikiTree browser extension installed and turned on the option that organizes my connections so that they're uh, in a nice uh, nice sort of little table like this. If you don't have the WikiTree browser extension installed and you're just using the regular WikiTree site without any ex extra extensions, you'll get the exact same information, but it'll be it's sort of in paragraph form. So you might have to hunt a little further just to just, just see that. But um, for me, because all of the profiles are all related to Scotland and are all connected up from that neck of the woods, um, the all, all of them are only two degrees from my closest to my most distant one. So I suspect that many of us will have a similar small range. So connecting or competing one against the other is not going to be very exciting. So we're just going to worry about King of England, King of Scotland. Um, and for me, it looks like Edward Plantagenet. That's Edward, King Edward Longshanks, King of England. I'm 25 degrees from him. I'm one more to Robert the Bruce. King of the Scots, 26. And also 26 degrees from the Douglas, who I'm not directly connected with, at least yet, but it'd be nice to know whether I am or not. <laughs> <laughs> so that would that would be interesting. But anyways, tell us in the chat which one you're closest to. But let's go back. Uh, now, the one cool thing about this, so this is the anniversary, of course, of the Declaration of Arbor. And there is, in fact, a project on WikiTree about the um, um, Arbroath. And if you click on this link down here in the GDG point post, that'll take, um, or where is it here? I think it's that. Um, that'll take you to the free space page, all about the Scotland Declaration of Arbroath. And this is a wonderful free space page, um, project, project landing page. Um, and there are many, Wikitree has many, many projects. Um, and I encourage you strongly to, you know, get involved in one if you haven't already done so, because you get to meet other people, you get to do um, collaborate and you get to learn skills um, and or really refine your research skills in a specific area. And that helps in lots of lots of different ways. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick preview of this free space page for the project because it's really set up really nicely. Um, so just like all uh, many free, most free space pages, there's a, a table of contents there so you can quickly jump to different ask places of it if you want right away. Um, uh, but what I like how this is set up is um, it's sort of got two sections. On the left panel is all sort of the information about it. So what is the mission of the project? Um, 
So it's very interesting. So what's interesting is that, so the mission is to improve the profiles of the nobles and the barons who signed this declaration, this mm -hmm. declaration of independence, um, including up to three generations of their descendants. Now, most of these have 10, 12, 15 generations down. So that would be ridiculous, a ridiculous number. <laughs> so they're going to start, they start, they're just starting small, say three generations down, which in itself is going to be a lot because, you know, lots of people had big families back then. So three generations of big families is going to be a lot of profiles. Um, and then they say, after they get that done, then maybe they'll revisit, maybe the latter fourth generation, who knows. But um, the other thing about this, because this, um, this declaration was in 1320, see, there it is right there, 1320, all of these profiles are pre-1500. So you need to be certified for pre-1500. So there's some, some things you have to do, some reading, some things you have to agree to, to, uh, to work on profiles that far back in time. Um, but that's all worthwhile because you learn lots and lots of good stuff about that. And then there's more details on another page. But the initial goals are, um, <laughs> I guess on the Wikitree browser extension, one of the neat things you have is if you hover over a link, It'll give you a little preview mm -hmm. of, that, um, of that page, which is very handy, um, unless you're live casting, in which case it gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> True. It's a great feature, but not when you're live casting always. <laughs> so I'll try to keep my cursor away from those live links. Um, and it tells you then it tells you how to join the project. So if anyone who wants to join that uh, today, I'd recommend it. And how to get started, what the assignments are, and so on. But the other cool thing is in the middle. So there's a picture of the of one of the copies of the declaration that still survives, um, and a little details about it. The actual title of it it's a letter from the nobility, barons, and commons of Scotland to Pope John the Twenty Second, and it was a declaration of Scottish independence. Um, interesting. They they compare it to like the Engl an English Mag Magna Carta. And sometimes the, the, the ideals of the Scottish Declaration inspired notions of individual liberty in the charters of the English colonies. So the what happened back here in 1320 had ripples, you know, into the, the founding of, of America, which is very cool. And later to the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. So that's very cool. And then here's the whole text of the Declaration, which I think is really cool. Now, the it's Declaration... Amazing from, to course, see somebody took the time to do that. I know. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And in the color coding they did. The declaration was done in Latin. It was going to the Pope in Rome, so it had to be done in Latin because, mm -hmm. you know, that's that was the official language of the church. Um, so impressive. But then they did an English translation, of course. So, And one of the lines in it, uh, <laughs> talking about the Scottish independence and the, and the will to be independent, and there's, in truth, not for glory, not for riches, for, uh, where is it? There was a, where was that line? There was a line about as long as there's a hundred of us left, we will fiercely fight for independence. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was in this opening paragraph here, but it is later on. But anyways, you should read you should read the text because it's very interesting. It starts off, you know, greeting the Pope, you know, listing all the names, um, and then it sort of gives a little bit of a history. The history might be a little, you know, little one-sided. <laughs> <laughs> Driving out the Britons, utterly destroying the Picts, assailed by Norwegians and Danes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then basically, and then talking about the horrible things that King, uh, the King of the English, Edward, has perpetrated and the deeds of cruelty, massacre and violence and stuff. Um, he do, they do mention attacking monasteries, you know, so that's going to hit home to the Pope. Um, and then basically beseeching the, for the Pope's um, uh, protection or uh, his um championing their cause and then there it is uh, i mean this it, is amazing this i think is what makes WikiTree special what it is it, you can't really do something like this easily elsewhere the, i'm just fascinated by this page yeah it is amazing it is amazing yeah now i just glanced over briefly chris asked if this is in line with the war with england that they talk about in outlanders uh it's Culloden. A long time since I've watched an episode of Outlander, so I'm not sure what the time frame is. But the time frame, um, Scotland and England were at war around the turn of the um, 1300s. So in 1297, I think, uh, so was the time uh, 
this would be earlier than this would be way, way earlier. Because yeah, what I was thinking, um, aren't they always still in contention with each other? <laughs> well, yeah, that's <laughs> true. This is so true. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it is a little earlier. Um, but then, so the other thing on this page is a link to the categories. Um, and in the category page, so the people who have that category are those who signed the declaration. So there's a list of all the profiles. You can click on any one of them and go to those profiles. Or you can click on my connections. And mm -hmm. then you can see how closely you are related to all of these. And look, and I am either an, well, all of these are either ancestor cousins. In fact, I went through, they're all cousins. None of them are my direct ancestors, but all of them are cousins of mine distant cousins, because look at this, the closest one is at 30 generations, which really is a second cousin 24 <laughs> times removed. <laughs> um, so I guess that, mean, that means my 24th great grandfather was second cousins with one of this guy. So I guess that's not too far, but anyways. And the last one, let's see how far away this Magnus is. Uh, eighth cousins 23 times removed, so yeah pretty distant. Um, uh, but then here we are. So King Robert, the first King of the Scots, Robert the Bruce, he's the first profile we're going to talk about. But again, before we do that, let's dive down another rabbit hole because look at the top of his profile here. I love when they do this um, because he's, he's the King of the Scots, right? That's his title. And you have on his profile, you have this little template here the succession template. And so you can, if you're just interested, well, I mean, let's see where the King of the Scots, where that, you know, who, who what happened in before or after, you can just click on that. So right before he became King of the Scots in 1306, um, there was, he was preceded by what was called the second interregnum, which isn't a person's name. Second is his first name. Interregnum is his last name. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, if you know a little bit of Latin, you can tell that interregnum means between kings, interregnum, regnum meaning king. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a period, a period in time where there are no kings. So it's sort of a temporary thing. And then before him, John Balliol was the king of the Scots. And then there was another interregnum. And then from then on, we have kings all the way. Well, actually, not quite kings. We have a queen of the Scots. Uh, Margaret, who is also known as the Maid of Norway. And then we can keep on going back. You can just click, click, keep clicking on the preceded by, and you can go back and back in time until you get to the very first one. So Margaret and I are, oh, we're second cousins, 24 times removed. But if you go far enough, far enough back, or for me, I went far enough back. I came to a king. I've got Duncan the first is my 30th great grandfather. That means... I'm directly related, directly descended from a king of Scotland, which makes me a very, very distant member of the Scottish royalty. <laughs> so my challenge is to all of you is to start with king with um, go to open up the profile for um, uh, Bruce and go for uh, where are we here and then go for go back in time until you come to a grandfather and i want to see if i want to i'm i'm challenging you to see if anyone is closer than 30th great grandfather and how or how many of us are actually scottish royalty oh scottish <laughs> that's tough yes <laughs> now there might I, I suspect not every one of us descend from some scottish royalty and see like like this was he was born in what 10,040s or no, about 10,010. So there are literally millions of people who have a closer claim to the throne. So I'm not moving to Glasgow or Edinburgh anytime. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that's a very cool thing. Um, so um, moving on. So here is uh, the first, King Constantine is the first king or the first king of Scotland or the king of Picts. No, wait a second. There was a point there where the king of Scotland was mixed in with the kingdom of Picts. Um, and in fact, there's a nice little map. Where did I, where is the map? That shows how Scotland, there's Pictland is the northern part. There's another part here called Strathclyde. There's also, 
sometimes Strathclyde is his own kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's Delridia, Deliada, which mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of before until I saw this map. And then there's Northumbria, which I believe is actually part of Northern England, is not? Northumbria? That's not part of Scotland currently. We, we have maybe some of our Brits in the chat can confirm that. <laughs> That's right. I believe Ruth's in the chat. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sharon Haynes. Robert the Bruce is her 19th great grandfather. Ooh. Wow. wow. She's very. Okay. The last thing I want to show you about these, this succession rabbit hole is something that I discovered this week and those who watched Ask Lesh with me is that Alesh now has a report that he puts out weekly on the succession templates. So if you go to that page, and I'll put the link right to it in the chat, you can actually see the list of the succession. So you don't, is, you don't have to just go click, 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 click to go back in time. You can actually see all of them. Now, there was something that happened in <laughs> this middle column that says errors. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. This middle column that says errors is supposed to be a link to the actual profiles, and some of them it does, and some of them it uh, no. Nope. As long as it says errors, it doesn't. But you can see the the uh, URL or the wiki tree ID there. But here is the King of Scotland's uh, monarchs of Scotland, and you can so you can see that, and you can you can in this one page. Uh, it starts at the top, Kings of Hung Hungary. So you can see the list of all the Kings of Hungary. Um, this, I mean, the page was put together for people who work on projects and who, you know, whose job is to make sure that these succession boxes work. Um, so it may not look very exciting to, to others, um, but it's a one place where you can actually see them all in one list. And I think that's kind of cool. So that is my little geeky. Um, great. So we have... A uh, confirmation from both Hillary and Ruth uh, that Northumbria is in Northern England. And Ruth says, um, literally, the land north of the Humber. Of course. That but makes but perfect nowadays, sense. It's used to refer to Northumberland and sometimes County Durham as a tourist destination. Northumbria. North, um, north of Humber. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I, I really, I really hope that the H isn't silent. <laughs> oh, Humber. Humber, Humber. <laughs> Thank Very you. Cool. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So Robert the Bruce. Now we've got lots of profiles and we haven't even started. So I'm going to pick out one maybe uh, uh, interesting fact about both of them. Well, one interesting fact is that Finnegan wants to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my wife just got home and he might hope he's hoping that she might have dropped a crumb on the floor from a muffin or something. Who knows? <laughs> he can dream. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, Robert Bruce, first King of the Scots. Um, uh, he and King Edward, the King Edward uh, did not see eye to eye all the times. Well, not, there were times when, um, when he did play pledge fealty to England and was okay with Edward, but then it became obvious that um, Edward did not have the best interests of Scotland at heart, so he joined the rebellion and the fight for Scottish independence and eventually and led that and eventually um, became their king. Um, the other, th uh, the three big names in this whole, um, or the uh, another big name in this that of course, which is not a profile of the week, but is William Wallace. Um, who, you know, there's been lots of movies made about as well. And Braveheart. Who, Braveheart, exactly. Yeah, I, I've got an interesting fact about him. Okay. So, um, one of my brothers is actually, if factual, proven to be brother of William Wallace. One he, of tells your... everybody, he tells everybody every Friday night that he is William Wallace's brother, actual brother. So, Really? <laughs> I guess I'm related. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Everybody, cool. everybody, uh, it seems like an Appalachian wants to be a Scot, but. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, so there we go. This profile is really well done and it goes into all, all sorts of details. What's interesting, so the, the one thing, and I'm not gonna read through it all, and I, I'm pretty sure we've covered a lot of this history on a previous um, roundup. So I'm not gonna repeat it all, it's, um, 
But the one really cool thing is that uh, he comes from a very royal family. And the top here talks about, you know, his various titles and whatnot. Um, he had lots of siblings, four brothers and five sisters. Uh, unfortunately, three of his brothers were executed by the English in 1306 and 1307 during the rebellion. Um, his sister married the King of Norway and his brother, Edward, became the King of Ireland. So in their, in their immediate family, they had three kingdoms between them, which is very, I thought, very cool. That's amazing. Isn't that neat? Neat. So the rebellion happened um, uh, in the early 1300s, 1306, 1307. Um, and let's see, is this the one that has the timeline? No, I think another another profile has, I think Edwards has the timeline on it. Uh, has the, um, then 1320, the the day that we're, we're the anniversary today it was a declaration of scottish independence and it was finally recognized um in later 1326 27 actually i should we could actually go here on his thing uh well he became he declared himself king in 1306 but uh england sort of let it be or ag agreed with the declaration in the later in the 13 late 1320s um so then next one of course is edward edward the first edward uh longshanks king of england and uh of course he he's the one who wanted more control over scotland and uh was fighting against it did a lot um and here's his timeline so that's what the one thing i like about this is it does give you the timeline here he fought in crusades so back in the early 1200s um he was, a, he was part of a bunch of crusades to the Holy Land. Um, uh, had a, <laughs> didn't like Wales, had, uh, was trying to wipe out the Welsh re rebellion there. Um, built a whole pile of castles in Wales to keep them under control. Um, and then, uh, so the predecessor to Robert the Bruce was crowned. And then uh, the details about the War of Independence are all there. So that's kind of neat how it sort of, delineates that mm -hmm. uh the next person william the third earl of ross he's one who went so most of the i think all the rest of these or almost all the rest of these um were ones who signed the declaration of arbor the De declaration of independence on this date back in 1320 and you'll see that little indication right there at the top of their profile um and there and you so you can click on that or you can click on this top so he has a title. So again, you could use that successor to go back and forth and see who was before him, who was after him, and all that. Stuff. But um, though he signed the declaration, at one point he was on the side of, of uh, King Edward. And in fact, uh, his uh, claim to infamy was that despite what the sort of the rules of the land were, he actually kidnapped um, uh, relatives female relative of Robert Bruce, even after his, his wife and contract, his daughter, uh, his sisters, and they were jailed or sent to not um, to live. So that was, that was not nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. Now, at one point, he and Robert the Bruce made up and he switched sides and, um, and so on. And the women were eventually released. But um, that's quite a turnabout, and that speaks a lot of what Robert the Bruce that he was actually willing to forgive. That like that's a pretty major, major bro broach of things. Uh, next one, Henry Sinclair was also a signer. Um, the thing I thought found cool is that he also he went by the name Saint Clair, and his father went by Saint Clair. And this is again, it's sort of like the Northumbria thing. It's how names and words evolve and saint Clair. if you just say it fast enough it sounds like sinclair and that's how it evolves sure often. yeah yes yes yeah saint Clair, saint Clair, saint Clair. yeah so i thought that was very cool and um uh he was appointed he was a sheriff not the sheriff of nottingham but the sheriff <laughs> of <Manor. laughs> yes but i can't help but think of the sheriff of nottingham and all those cartoons and stuff um and he also was like like the previous guy. It originally started out following the Edwards, but then eventually switched sides and realized that 
Scotland independence was more important. And so he joined uh, Bruce's banner. Uh, then we have Roger Mowbray, another signer. And he was, uh, look at the name of this book here. The original chronicle of Scotland. Like, look at how it's spelled. I love the old oh, English. Oh, that cool? It's still, like it's very awesome. recognizable. <laughs> it's like, wow. I think that's cool. So that that's a cool fact from from this profile alone. You know, second sentence in is really neat. Um, he was. Let's see. There he goes. Um, he was part of what was called the Souls Conspiracy. So after the Declaration of Arbroath was signed, there were some people who didn't like Robert the Bruce as their king, and they wanted to put someone else, same William de Solis, on as the king. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about that. But apparently, Robert um, gave out lands to people who were supporters of his and took lands away from people who were not on his side. And some of these people had their feelings hurt, I guess. And so <laughs> in a... Uh, typical Game of Thrones type of move. Uh, there was a plot, but that plot did not survive. And some of those supporters in the you know, of the Solus were counted as treason instruments. Some were killed, uh, and this guy died in prison. Um, and because of his participation, he his he was supposed to be drawn and quartered. Um, and by doing that, then his lands would resort to the, the crown, Robert the Bruce, and which could be dispensed otherwise. But he actually, Robert the Bruce um, rescinded that and allowed the body to stay intact so it could be buried in a proper church graveyard. So that was kind of magnanimous on him at the end. Mm -hmm. James Douglas, the one who has my birth surname is only a cousin and not a direct ancestor, at least so far as I know. Um, good Sir James, the Black Douglas, he was one of, uh, along with William Wallace, one of his closest, um, Robert Bruce's closest allies. And he was the one, I believe, he was the one charged with taking Robert the Bruce's heart to the Holy Land after he passed away. Um, and unfortunately, let's see, there, sit down to, um, yes. So on his deathbed, King Robert elicited a promise that Douglas take his heart to the Holy Land to fulfill a pledge later. Um, he began his journey, but Douglas didn't make it. Douglas was killed in, in Spain. So the heart was returned back to Scotland. So I didn't quite make it. It was on the pilgrimage, but didn't quite make it all the way to the Holy Land. But, Can you imagine a pilgrimage, what it would be like back then and carrying somebody's heart? <laughs> a little uh, different. You know, we were all maybe it was dried out by then. Yeah. Um, uh, Alexander Fraser of Touch Fraser and Cowie. Um, so I love how they, you know, the name, different um, names and uh, titles are, are given out. Mm -hmm. um, and he served, um, he was a sheriff of Sterling and Kincardine, signed the declaration, of course. Um, and he was also known as, uh, where does he say there? Yeah, advice to the share. Um, he was married to the king's sister. So that's an interesting link there. Uh, Edward was the Marshal of Scotland, or Marshal, basically, is the translation of that. Um, and so that was a that was a title that he was bestowed on. Again, he was another signer um, of the uh, declaration and uh, was involved in the parliament. And there's a nice little uh, snippet from the declaration itself. Hmm. Uh, Andrew Leslie, the sixth of Leslie, Leslie being his uh, title. Uh, now, Interesting thing here, there's a neat, I love how they show the heraldry. And so his heraldry, the Leslie one, let me think now. Uh, I think the Leslie aspect is the three signets there in a row with the blue stripe. And the other one that he incorporated is the Abernathy, which is his wife's side. So he changed his coat of arm or he changed his armor. There's a, there's a whole interesting thing about here. 
Um, so the three buckles are the were the Leslie uh, signs. I might not. I'm probably not using the right term. The for the heraldry terms for this, uh, but he changed his his uh, heraldry, his armor, so that it incorporated not just his but also his wife's. And the idea was so then it could be divided up between his four children. And then there's details about there was details written about what each aspect of uh, could be given to each of his four children. So I thought that was interesting. So there, what it looks like now instead of one big shield with just the three buckles across it's in the quarters. That's so that, yeah, I thought that was a neat little thing. Um, David Lindsay, Lord of Crawford and Byers, also another signatory. And the thing that I thought was cool about his is they included a picture of the crop of uh, like an old style genealogy. Oh. Is, isn't that kind of cool? Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is, didn't come out in 1320 because I don't think typewriters were around in 13. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, the dates are past 1320, so unless they were uh, mind readers. <laughs> but what what is the date on that? I mean, can you tell from the image description? Uh, well, the latest date, the last person was um, the, his dates are 1781 to 1808, mm -hmm. and actually, no, that, that that's the 22nd Earl. The 23rd Earl um, died in 1825. So it's, it goes up to 1825, it looks like. Hmm. Okay. Uh, does it say the following? Illustrates the descent of the earldom up to the 22nd earldom. And then there's some details, asterisks there. Uh, it doesn't say, it says when it was uploaded. Yeah, it did. Oh, Some, here it is. From oh. the complete peerage. Uh, book published in 1913, it looks like. Hmm. Anyways, I always find those old things pretty cool. Uh, Joan was a countess. Here's the the first. There's only two women <laughs> in, in the profiles. Uh, she was a countess of Strathairn. And what's interesting about her is that, um, so she was, let me think. She was the wife of one of the signers. Um, well, she herself was not a baron or an earl, so she couldn't sign. Um, but she was the wife of one of the signers, and she had, um, she was second wife, so, so he was an earl of Strathern, but she became the countess of Strathern, and so she held the title. But she also was given other titles, and uh, let's see, so well, she had a number of titles, yeah. even uh. She was made the Countess of Strathern and Lady of the and the Lady of the Barony of Porta, and these she did in free power of her widowhood, which I take to mean is that mean she was granted this title even though she was a widow. It did not pass on to um, a male. She didn't lose the title at least until her death. So that's kind of cool. And some of her titles gave her some annuities, some funds. So that's kind of cool. The last one, the last profile, has, is a very cool one. This is Lady Agnes Randolph, Countess of Dunbar and March. So she is the uh, she was descended from a signer of the Declaration. Well, she wasn't there, but while one at one point, so she lived. She and her husband, Patrick Dunbar, the ninth Earl of Dunbar, lived in the castle. Um, they actually got married in. They got married in England because at one point in time, Scotland was under interdict, 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 which means uh, that's a term that the church uses when it says that you're not allowed to do any sacraments. So the, um, at one point they were in disfavor with the Pope. And so they weren't allowed to celebrate um, sacraments like matrimony. So they had to go to England where they were allowed to get married. Um, and uh, anyways, later on, in 1337, her husband was away. Uh, um, yes, her husband was, uh, yeah, I think it's 30, yeah, 1337, her husband was away. And the castle they lived at, Dunbar Castle, was under siege by Salisbury, the Earl of Salisbury, from an English, English Earl. She thought, he thought, there's just a few women and a few old men at this castle, I'm gonna take it. Well. Yeah. Not so fast. <laughs> You've got to read this profile. It is hilarious mm -hmm. what she did. And he never he never made it in. But boy, wow. did she want him. So he brings, he, uh, 
she sends a message out to him like so he he comes and he says you know uh he he asks for their surrender and she sends a message of scotland's king i hold my house he pays my meat and fee and i will keep my god and house while my house will keep me so basically <laughs> take off buddy i'm staying in my house you're not coming in <laughs> good for her siege engines they begin bar bombarding the castle with boulders they keep the boulders on the castle walls and then that doesn't do anything so then they make a show look at this then they go she it's and her amazing. lady go yeah. along the top of the ramparts and they dust off the ramparts where the boulders left dust like to taunt them <laughs> yeah. And then they build a big engine, a big engine to ram, ram the castle, and it's called a sow. The, that was the term for it. They moved it up, and then Agnes had them roll the boulders that they they had just lobbed on down onto the sow and break it to <laughs> complete And then, <laughs> and then she yelled down. So because all the people who were hiding in it or were pushing it, you know, had to scatter. And he said, "Behold the litter of English pigs." <laughs> And then she goes on and on, and she's, um, anyways, it's hilarious, you know, what she does. And then um, she taunts them. At one point, they they put her, they they stop stop attacking, and they thought, well, we'll just hold out. We'll we'll surround it so that it'll be under siege, and they'll starve. But what they didn't realize is that there was a secret door to the coast where they could get resupplied. And so at one point, she sends out some fresh bread and wine to the people. <laughs> She's a gracious host. <laughs> oh. Anyways, and then it ends. I'll just end with this final thing. This is a, from the, the Earl of Salisbury's thoughts were memorialized in this old ballad. She kept a stir and tower and trench, that watchful, plodding Scottish wench. Came I early, came I late, I found Agnes at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is great. Anyways, I think that's my favorite profile of the group. So, uh, Lady Agnes, my seventh cousin, 23 times removed. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the profiles of the week. Wow. <laughs> that was great. I love learning about them. <laughs> that was a good one to end with. That was a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Well, thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. um, so, we have photos. It's a new Ooh, month. Our first. Our first uh, roundup in April, and the new theme is couples. And we have about six photos. Um, so let me make this a little bigger. Um, so this lovely couple is uh, was uh, posted by Alexis Nelson, uh, and it is her husband's grandparents, uh, Eunice and Hugh Hennon. Uh, the photo was taken in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she said that they truly loved each other and had a wonderful life. Um, I'm going to let me move this up a little bit so we can see more of the photo. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, they they had a wonderful life together. She lived to be 100 and told me that they did all the things that they wanted to do. I, I thought that was just lovely. That's, <laughs> That's nice. nice. Yeah. That's nice. Um, they did their bucket list. They, got they did. They took several trips to see her sister in Colorado, and they even went to Canada a few times. Mm -hmm. Such such a beautiful portrait. And I just love love her her uh, the lace work on her blouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Then next, for, I think is Yoke. If I'm if I'm right, yes. Okay, Yoke. Oh, neat. Yeah, this is um, uh, her, Yoke's grand aunt and grand uncle. Oh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. But Rengelina mm -hmm. Maria Van Vindal and Andreas Griekspor. So uh, she said, I never met them, but I think they look quite elegant and dapper in this photo. And I completely agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lovely. Um, now this. Oh, look at that. Yeah. 
This was posted by Brenda Millage, and it's her grandparents in 1972 with a gingerbread house that her younger sister made for them. Well, it kind, of, kind of looks like uh, English Christmas hats. Yes, it does. Crowns. Yeah. Well, gingerbread, that comes out of Christmas often, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she doesn't give the date, just 1972, mm -hmm. but... Looks like it could be Christmas. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, and let's see, Anne Fiordalisi uh, posted two photos. Um, these are her maternal grandparents, Ferdinand uh, Francois Rouquier and Violet Rose Kay from Kankakee, Illinois. I, you know, Anne, I, maybe I forgot it, but I was, as I was reading your things this morning, I didn't realize that you have a such a strong uh, Illinois connection. Ooh. So we have that in common. Neat. Yeah. That's a very, very nice photo. And then also uh, her great aunt, great uncle and aunt uh, celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary also in Kankakee. Very nice. Um, so I think, D, yeah, of course, D is in the chat. Mm -hmm. because, uh, was the first. <laughs> yep, D was the first. Um, and um, D said that she had trouble um, posting this um, to mm -hmm. the to the G two G post. Um, so I went ahead and posted it. And um, I, I have to apologize, D, when I was doing that. Um, the system asked me, would you like to make this a comment instead of an answer? And I thought it was referring just to the photo and that the photo would be posted as a comment to your answer, but it made the whole thing, everything's still there, but oh. it looks a little different. Anyway, oh. <laughs> um, my fault. Um, so Dee said, um, these are relatives from my husband's branches. A Upon discovering two vintage suitcases chocked full of old letters and uh, old letters, documents, and photos. Uh, this is the only one of the beautiful photos we found inside. Uh, only one of many, I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's the Butcher Love wedding photo from 1896. Wow. 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 Uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to scroll down. Um, uh, Cairo, Illinois. Um, and so look, we've got, we've, someone wrote, um, Mary, Mary Boucher love. And yeah. then, of course the lovely image of the couple. And oh. then we've got the photographer's studio uh, nice. address and location. Just, just stunning. That is neat. I'm mm -hmm. jealous of those suitcases she has. Yeah. Me too. Oh. I think by now everybody in my extended family knows that if they want to de declutter and things like that, that it, they should contact me. <laughs> <laughs> Send it your way. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I love this. Thank you so much, Dee. Right. Okay. So um, uh, I'll just say say in advance um, that we, we don't have a roundup next Saturday due to no. Connectathon, but we have two more Saturday roundups in April following that, the 20th and the 27th. So more time to post your couple's photos. So please do. Um, so moving on to our ancestors. Um, we have, oh, I don't know, a good handful of ancestors <laughs> to celebrate this morning, about five nice. of them. Um, so let's go to the first one, who is, uh, well, the wiki treer who, um, who um, posted this ancestor um, is Andrew Simpier. I hope I'm saying your last name correct. This is the brother of his great grandfather. Um, so Joseph Asaf Amos Simpier Jr., uh, who was his connection to April is that he was born on uh, April 12th, 1871. So his birthday is coming, coming up in the next week, uh, born in Manistee, Michigan. Um, but somehow 
made this is quite a distance made him his way to uh, Olympia Washington can you share his profile we're just seeing the the oh, G2G sorry, sorry, there sorry. Go. there we go excellent yeah yeah, yeah. made his way to uh, Olympia Ooh. and um, has a tragic story um, as you'll see he only lived to be 30 years old mm -hmm. and what happened was that he um, he was in a he was worked very briefly um, for a, um, a a logging uh, it was a lumber accident and so uh, this was July 13th 1901 and his uh, it's described here in some detail. He, uh, he, his leg was caught. Oh, in yeah. Yeah. That's very so, dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. He, and he was only, I think it was his second day on the job. Oh. So, so oh, perhaps, okay. perhaps he didn't quite know didn't realize how, how dangerous. things worked. So, so yeah. sad. And oh. he was survived by his wife and children. Um, we have some, some photos here, beautiful, beautiful, handsome photo here. Mm. And uh, I think, I thought there was another photo here that he, he and his brothers. Mm. So um, Joseph, so he, it looks like he would have been the one on the, the far left here. Mm -hmm. what, what a nice, nice family photo. Mm -hmm. How old uh, year is that photo? Uh, it, it says 1885, approximately. Hmm. That's great. Yeah. 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 I like how they posed the little one. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I wonder in 1885, how long they would have had to stand there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for the exposure to work. For yeah. the exposure. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, okay. Well, Thank you very much for, for sharing your, your, your great, great grand uncle with us, Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, next we have uh, George Benjamin Manley. Um, so this, um, so Ruth, who's in the chat with us, uh, shared, mm -hmm. is sharing him with us. Uh, he's her great, 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 Grand uncle, uh, and his connection to April is that he married. Uh, who did he marry? Amy Amy Ellen Sharp uh, in April, April nineteenth, eighteen ninety nine. Uh, mm -hmm. They were in Hull, Yorkshire, and he was the inspiration for Ruth starting a one place study. Um, so this and the study is on the Port of Hull Society Sailors Orphan Home. No. So oh. what, what happened was he was uh, born in Hull uh, to, he was the son of John Manley, a fisherman, mm -hmm. and Mary Gregory. Um, in the 1871 census, he would have been two. Um, his father's not listed in the census, um, but Ruth is surmising that um, he, was, he was away at sea at that time mm -hmm. um, because his wife is, I, I guess his mother's listed as wife, not the head. Maybe mm -hmm. she insisted is still married. Um, his father definitely did die in March 1875, and his mother was not able to look after all of the children. Mm -hmm. So in the 1881 census, that would have been when he was like 12, we see him and his brother George. Um, some of the children were in the orphan's home, mm -hmm. which is now called the Sailors Society, Sailors Children's Society. Um, but George himself followed, he became a sailor, a mm -hmm. fisherman. Uh, well, I don't know if he's a fisherman, but he followed his father mm -hmm. to sea. And at the census, he was fifth hand on the ship Boarhound. Wow. So um, I also opened up um, Ruth's uh, one page study page. So she's got a nice picture there. And it's part of the one place studies directory. Um, with a history and uh, and her tasks to do mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. so, um, very, very. What it's an ambitious project, but but really worthwhile. Uh, 
and then really is because there are, she's probably had a lot of people reach out to her mm -hmm. asking for help. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, people who are, are really hungry to find out, you know, the history of their ancestors. Um, and then also, um, uh, a con second one from Ruth uh, is her grandmother, uh, Gladys oh, Winifred nice. Atkinson. So um, if we, uh, I think this was uh, Ruth's paternal grand grandmother. There we go. There's Ruth. Yes, paternal grandmother. Um, and her connection to April was that she died April 28th, uh, 1991. Uh, also in Hull. Um, and uh, she, let's see, have a wedding announcement. That's really special. That is neat. Yeah. <laughs> and and those days, I mean, they really dug don't yes. dig deep with the with the details of yeah, that's right. a dainty gown of Chantilly lace and <laughs> I love those and the flowers and what everybody yep. and, and what her going away outfit was. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, I saw the word organist in there too. <laughs> oh, 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 where is that? Is there the bride has been a member of the church choir and the bridegroom became a former organist there, being oh. a former organist. There we go. I very approve. nice a singer very and the organist wow that sounds that sounds very familiar to me <laughs> that combination now we're, now we're now we're in your world right greg yeah so yeah beautiful lady thank you for sharing her with us ruth i'm gonna go ruth yeah oh she ruth what? made a comment about the previous profile oh yes yeah became yeah. a college in a hotel and she stayed there when she I mean, was that's amazing there. yeah let's look at the the photo Huh. Isn't that cool? That that would be very meaningful. Uh, yeah. A little point, poignant, but meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. And to walk the grounds and knowing that our ancestor yeah. walked the grounds yeah. and was there or go through. And it's For sure. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. When I visited England, um, one of my great grand, great, I guess it was my third great grandfather, um, and has spent the last few years of his life in the workhouse in Yates. Mm -hmm. And I was able to visit there, and I had that same sensation. Of, you get a different you know, a feeling from mm -hmm. just reading about it and then being there, right? You just absolutely you know, it just encompasses that feeling that comes to yeah. you. This is where they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. Good luck with the OPS, Ruth. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Liz Shiflet uh, gave us our next person. Uh, ancestor, William Hamilton Watkins, mm -hmm. uh, eight, and his connection to, he's her second great grandfather, uh, and his connection to April is that he was born April 11th, uh, 1815, birthday coming up, um, mm -hmm. this coming Thursday. Um, and very, um, I thought it was very special what, uh, I'll, I'll read what, uh, what Liz said, she said, because of WikiTree, I now know what my great great grandfather looked like. The following picture was provided by a distant cousin who found me through the profile I had posted for him. So, cousin bait. Wow. Exactly. Um, so, Amazing. there's, yep. Um, and another very interesting thing about this portrait, she says, this is an excellent example of a portrait produced by an itinerant artist of the time who had canvases with the torsos already painted. And then the artist would just insert oh. the head and the hands and voila. <laughs> That's wild. I mean, you can see that um, proportionally, yes. you know, there's something a little askew. The hand, there's something... Yeah. Yeah. But his arm looks too short. To yes, me. exactly. Um, but, but still, the, the likeness of the face is is invaluable to have. Mm -hmm. So, um, wow, that's so special that 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 um, worked out for you, Liz, when you joined WikiTree. And uh, he's a he's a very fascinating um, historical figure um, within Mississippi. Uh, he was prominent Methodist minister. Um, and he's by bi his biographies and in, in um, lives of Mississippi authors. Um, 
and she's uh, working at uh, um, gathering, collecting his sermons. So that that sounds like a big project. Neat. Yeah. And if you ever see any of Liz's profiles, she does an excellent job. Liz was actually one of my first mentors on Wiki Tree when I came in. And oh, met. Nice. So I love her profiles. Um, I love the work that she does. She does tremendous amount of work, actually. She's pre-1500 certified. So she does a lot of work that we saw for older profiles. Mm -hmm. That's amazing that the cousin bait worked mm -hmm. and yeah. the photo. Because if you're not going to get a source or a DNA connection, what do you want? You want a photo. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and uh, and Fiora Lisi wins the prize for having the largest number of April connections. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, we're not going to look at all of them in detail, but um, I wanted to show off. This is her um, grandmother, Anna uh, Porcello. Uh, who was born April 25th, 1899 in Brooklyn and uh, made her way uh, later in life to Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and uh, let's see, she was part of a large family. I think that, yeah, 12 children. Wow. Yep. And uh, she, she married, uh, let's see, let me go to the top again. So she, she married uh, Fiordalisi. So I guess this would be on your mm -hmm. paternal side. Yeah. So in um, pictures, uh, we've got a picture there. A little hard to see, but I wonder who that is. A grandchild, <laughs> probably. Maybe Anne can tell us. Um, and then um, also... Um, and so let me go here. Um, this is, uh, Anne's mother, uh, who was born, uh, April 11th, 1932. So shares a birthday with, uh, Liz Shiflett's, uh, ancestor, uh, Yvette Marie Louise Roquier. And, um, I, I think we've, we've heard her story a little bit before because mm -hmm. I, I remember, uh, some of the details, but I'm not sure I had looked at the profile. So we've got some, there's, there is um, Anne and her mom. Neat. Very sweet photo. Um, and then let's see, who else am I missing? We had, uh, she had a, the, the, uh, I think a lot of the other uh, profiles, at least two of them were siblings of her grandmother, Anna. And uh, they they had uh, either b April birth or death dates, and then her grandfather. Uh, let's see if I go back here. And it was husband of nope Ferdinand Ferdinand mm -hmm. Francois was the was the other one who was born and died in in April. Double April. Double April. Now he wasn't married in April, was he? Uh, I don't know. What what a what a lovely photo. That, that is. is great. Yeah. Uh let's see. When was he married? Um it's not the date is not May. Oh, May 7th, 1927. Oh. Well, you you could call it April 37th. <laughs> Keep that theme going. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and he was born in France. Ah, Ooh, Narbonne. Interesting. Oh, Rukier. Yeah. Huh? I don't know. Bonsoir. I want, I want, would love to hear the story sometime of how he made his way to Cleveland. That's huh. quite a journey. You think before the war as a teenager? Before World War One? Let's see. Hmm. He migrated and where went the oh, ship? He went to Paris to become a chef. He was hired to be a cook at a private club in Chicago. Oh. So he took a ship from Bordeaux in December after his parents died. This all happened. Hmm. hmm. So he came to Chicago first. Anyway, I'm guessing. Well, I don't have to his guess. Parents died. His, his parents died. died in, yeah, so it must have been after mm -hmm. 1911. 
Interesting. Neat. Yeah. So, um, so thank you at all for sharing those. Mm -hmm. um, ancestors. And as I said, with the photos, we have two more Saturdays, keep them coming. We love celebrating the ancestors and um, seeing the beautiful photos, hearing the stories. Um, for a tip, um, I, I have a quick tip and it is related to um, some new, new things, some new changes this week on Wikitree. Um, so here I am on the homepage mm -hmm. and yeah, one of the changes uh, and I just, I'll, I'll talk about the second change maybe in two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. This seems like enough for today. But this has to do with how we search for people on Wikitree. Mm -hmm. So if I do, I'm going to search for a um, ancestor of mine that I worked on very hard last weekend, uh, Isaac Ely. He's my third great grandfather. So you can see oh. that. It now looks just a little bit different. That looks different, yes. Yeah, we're getting a table instead of a list. Easier to read. Easier to read and more very more ways to filter it. Ooh. So I I can uh, I'm a big one to to filter by birth date. That's what so I, I can still do that. Mm -hmm. um, I can reverse it. Ah. Um, now this is super cool. You can sort by privacy and oh, so, yeah yeah you'll see that now fortunately there are only 40 hits with this name so everybody is op uh, open that's that's hyperlinked pink because that's my guy um, mm -hmm. so that means that i've clicked on it but but they're all like blue background the, these are all open profiles except for eileen and we can see that there's a pri privacy lock on their privately public biography. Um, oh, you can't see that. Where Share this. Lock? Yep. Oh, there. There, there it is. Okay. Mm. So now if we go back to the table, um, the other thing we can sort by is edit date. And is that is that something we could filter for before? I don't remember. I've never used it. But that's very cool. Uh -huh. It's fairly new if it was before, yeah. but it is good. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just edit when we edit. Anybody. Right. Edit Anybody. Yeah. Right. So so it's it's to show you the Isaac Ely profile that has had the most recent activity. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I have this in reverse order. So let me reverse it. And now you can see, yep, mm -hmm. it was me last weekend <laughs> working away. How also had a manager to there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you related to Isaac? He is my third great grandfather. So I'm glad you said that because I will use this sometimes just to double check and see what's going on with my thirds. Just yeah. to see if somebody added new information. It's mm -hmm. kind of a quick way for me to just see if right. any new um, photo, somebody added a photo, as a matter of fact, not too long ago. So mm -hmm. it was kind of interesting to see that edit date. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I love that. And and there's more. There's more. You can also do a secondary sort. So see, it says sort by relevance, first name, birth date, death date, privacy, and edit date. And then by first name, birth date, death date. So if I wanted to do, um, let me search by birth date. Mm hmm well, what do I want to do? Do either of you have a, a preference? Well, if you did birthday, can you do birthday and death date? And then you can see somebody died young. Mm, okay. So I'm searching by birth date. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're starting from earlier dates and getting later. Mm -hmm. And then, and then by death date. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think with birth date, Unless the, unless you have double two of the exact same, that's probably going to be the primary one that. Yeah. yeah. Well, what if I did or by if you search by name and then a date? Yeah. yeah. First name. And then I did birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you get all the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I do I do love being able to see the, mm -hmm. the, the profile manager. 
Um, so, so some of you may also be wondering, well, what about those surname pages, mm -hmm. which I think I talked about mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, and right. those are still there. Okay, here, mm -hmm. here's what I'm talking about. Um, oh, okay. uh, we're primary; they're not meant; they're no longer meant to be functional for us hard for us active wiki triers. They are hard they are more to to show off to new members like mm -hmm. look look you know how many of whatever surname we have as right. well as for Google um getting getting caught on Google. Mm -hmm. So um yeah cool. there is there's the tip of the week. Excellent. Great. Great. Yeah. Well uh, before we go, we should let, mention that there's lots of stuff coming up, isn't there? Um, is there's a little, a little something happening next weekend uh, <laughs> called the Connectathon. <laughs> Maybe. A little, little something. Yeah. And it's still not too late to sign up, right, Betsy? Right. Uh, I think the registration's open until Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Usually Wednesday is the Wednesday yeah. at midnight. Or 11.59. Yes. And mm -hmm. Betsy has been furiously going through it and registering people, haven't you? <laughs> Me and Azure, yes. You and Azure, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I guess, you, do you do the Canadian one? Because every time you update the Canadian one, I get a <laughs> ping in my mailbox. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, basically, I take the first half of the alphabet, uh, team, team name-wise, and she takes yeah. the second half. That makes sense. Yeah. Canada would be in the top, yeah. Right. Now, there's still a bunch of teams that have a small number of participants. So if you want to be part of one of the smaller teams, um, then you can join that. And the post for that is, let's see. If I click on Connectathon here, will that give me the? Oh, do you want the link for registering? Yeah, the registering. I can that's what. That or is it in the? If I go to G to G, hang on. It's probably pinned to the top, isn't it? Have you registered for the there connect? Yeah. So this is, you know, what what's really handy is these these things that are pinned to the top of the G to G. If you're ever looking for something, um, so there's the reg the link to the registration, which right. is right there. And I don't know if one of you want to put jump dump it into yep. the chat as well. There you go. Want. But make um, sure to sign up under the Thon team that you wish to that's sign right. up. That's so. right. I say that because we're listed first. Step Watch is listed first. So mm -hmm. we have several that we kind of figured out that they probably don't want Appalachia. And oh, we no. reach out to them and, and they go, oopsie. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we'll That's change. Right, yes. <laughs> so I love how they did this year. So there's an answer for every team. Yes. Yeah, so you're right. There's the Appalachia runs, Banyan. So if you go, you can see which one. So there's the Canadian connectors. There's 18 previous comments plus one, two, three, however many more there are. So you can tell how many people are on a team. So if you want to join a team, that's got a low number, then you can just scroll through there and find one and help them out. Um, or pick your favorite team, whatever you like. It doesn't matter because we've, we've grouped them so that the teams are of similar sizes are sort of in the same bracket. But really, it's all about making the tree the tree healthy. And that's what really matters. So. And have fun doing it. You know, and have fun doing when it. When you're yeah. on a team, you have your own Thon team discord. You go, you chat, research, yeah. you need help. You laugh um, if you're staying up 24 hours straight. You get silly. <laughs> Sometimes get a little silly. <laughs> That's right. Um, but other than that, so this week the Wiki Tree Challenge is 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 going as a going concern, and we're back to taking genealogists. And so the person for this week who we're trying to find uh, increase her CC7 score is Melly Alexander. Mm -hmm. the DK so she's got connections to Canada and America and uh, Lithuania and um, Europe, uh, England, lots of places. So help out there. Um, of course, there's a weekend chat going on, the regular Saturday sourcing sprint. There's a um, the regular things of the week, question of the week, ancestors of the week, data doctors challenge, um, connection combat and stuff, so on. And we will not be back here next week uh, with the roundup because we'll be appearing every four hours, whether you like it or not. Um, <laughs> You'll be sick of us. <laughs> You'll be, uh, yes. Um, to, to give you little updates during the Connectathon. And so. I think all three of us are doing Hangouts, right? We're all doing Hangouts, yeah. yeah. We kind of call mine, I, I only am doing the Midnight one this Hangout, or this okay. uh, Thon, and we call it Midnight Madness. It is kind of silly. That's fun. As we go through. <laughs> and, and Betsy, you have something. 
Yes, uh, there's a new member Q&A via Zoom this coming Thursday. Um, so I put the uh, the link to the free space page uh, in the chat. So all the details are there. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sandy, for joining us once again. Yes. Thanks for thank you. Being, having you. being so solid and everything. So um, I think that does it for now. Um, sign up for the Connect Online if you haven't, because we want to see you next weekend. And have a great week, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Happy Saturday. Happy week, Happy weekend. <laughs>